Okay, it looks like we've got a pretty good group on the, the call with us today. Um, today we're excited to present the uh, some new and exciting features in, in the PeopleSoft Health and Safety module. Uh, Micro is pleased to be sponsoring the event and we're thrilled to have Julie Alonzo with us today to, to do the presentation. Uh, if you don't know Julie, you should. Julie is the Product Management Director for the PeopleSoft Core HR products. She does a lot of work with PeopleSoft HCM customers and works with the, the PeopleSoft development team. And her ultimate goal is really to, to deliver some of the best new features for the PeopleSoft HCM product. In just a moment, I will turn it over to Julie. Uh, just a couple of quick things as we go through the webinar. If you do have any questions, there's a question option uh, within the uh, go to me, go to webinar uh, control panel. Please enter your questions there, and we will go ahead and ask those at the, the appropriate points throughout the presentation. Uh, we will have everybody muted to start, and uh, if we need to do uh, additional clarifications, we can unmute people individually if we need to at that point. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Julie. And Julie, please take us away here, and thanks again, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Mike, for inviting me. Again, um, as you said, my name is Julie Alonzo. So I'm the product strategist for PeopleSoft HR, and under HR falls health and safety. So it's part of your HR license, so you guys already own this. And this, um, for health and safety, um, you might see it in PeopleSoft under monitoring. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, for some reason I got muted for a second, sorry. So as I mentioned that for health and safety, it's part of your HR license, so you guys already own it. The module's been out there for quite some time, for a year, so it's very stable, it's very robust. So I'll go through and show you kind of what we've delivered now for self-service, as well as some of the configuration tables, um, some new analytic reporting that's coming out in the roadmap um, very shortly. So if you don't know about health and safety, this was delivered in probably um, PeopleSoft version three. So it's been out there for quite a long time. We uh, do support it legislatively. So for the countries that we do support for HR, um, we support um, legislative reporting. So example for like OSHA for the United States, we do Canada, Brazil. So if you are a global customer, there is a lot of reporting that we do support and we stay on top of any new changes that might be happening for those countries. But a big thing with health and safety is that it enables you to record and track incidents, illnesses, injuries, um, dangerous occurrences at your workplace. So we first delivered it for the health and safety administrator to do the entry, and now we have it available for employees to also um, submit incidents. As I mentioned too, you can report these incidents to OSHA. So it pulls all the information out of PeopleSoft, it generates the report for you to then submit to OSHA. Um, you can also record and track um, employees, not employees who were witnesses to maybe the incident, um, you can also submit and process medical and examination data. So immunization, you can track eye testing, you can track if you give your employees drug testing, any type of like physical, physical exams, if they're maybe like a firefighter or a police officer. So it can track all that information too. And it can also track like corrective and preventative actions. So if there is a car accident or maybe there's you know a wet floor to remind people to put the signs up to make sure that people are wearing COVID masks, so you can track all of the corrective and preventative actions and who's responsible for that when it was completed. So we'll kind of show through a little bit of that, but it's pretty robust in the amount of details that it can track and collect, probably more than you guys need, but for each country, um, we make that available. So we just recently made some enhancements um, for image 36. And the big enhancements that we had was the ability for the employees to submit it through self-service. And also too for the health and safety administrator to review and approve those incidents. So once they approve it, it will update the core health and safety tables. And we delivered a health and safety administrator dashboard to make it easier for you guys to configure health and safety, run reports out of. So I'll go ahead and show you what we've been working on. 
So if I come into um, self-service, I'm an employee as a self-service. So if I come here, once you have um, downloaded image 36, you'll see a new health and safety tile. It looks like this. So as an employee, I can click on this, and we made it also very mobile friendly because we understand a lot of the workforce too. Most people are on their mobile phone. And so the big one here too is an example that we've already um, put it in here. So the big one that we've added too is a near miss. So that will probably um, account for a large percentage too of your incidents. So these are preventative um, accidents. If there is a big coffee spill or maybe there's a um a big water spill right outside the doorway of your building or something like that that somebody could trip and hurt themselves but they haven't yet so you can submit a near miss so that will go through the health and safety administrator and she can notify you know facilities to come clean it up so that's preventing accidents so a lot of people can use that using their mobile phone um they can also if they need to you know submit covid testing yes i tested positive for covid um so this one they can see as the employee, they can come in and see all of their previous incidents that they've submitted. If I want to come in here, I can report a new incident. So here you have incident types. So we deliver certain values, but you guys can add or remove new values depending on type of um, industry you're in. Um, I will say too, we'll go over a little bit later. The setup is very, very easy for this. So if you're just a hospital, you, you'll have certain types of incidents. If Maybe if you're manufacturing, you'll have a certain type of incidents. People that probably will have a little bit more configuration will be like somebody like a county or city where they have, they could have hospitals, they could have police officers, they could have education, they could have, they have a wide range of different types of peoples and different types of incidents happening. So those will probably be the areas that they might have them more set up. But depending on the type of industry you are, this will drive what type of incidents you have. And again, it's all through configuration. So if I come here and I want to say, maybe I had an accident. So I click on incident type of accident. And depending on the type of incidents that you pick, whether um, we'll launch you into an activity guide. So if you guys are familiar with like fluid open enrollment, onboarding, we do use the activity guide. So one of the steps two that we have is the acknowledgement one. So it says, yes, I agree that to the best of my knowledge that the information I'm submitting is correct. And we put this here too. Um, it's optional for you guys to use it, but one, a lot of it is, especially for people maybe in California, you are capturing people's personal information or information related to them. And so in California, there is a Data Privacy Act. So just saying, you know, yes, I'm collecting your information, you're aware of that. And also too, however you wanna word your acknowledgement that to the best of my ability, what I am submitting is correct. Because some of these cases could go, the police could be investigating it, it could go to workers' comp, so you can just make sure that the employee is saying, yes, I agree that what I'm saying is the truth. So you can word your acknowledgement however you want. Again, if you don't want the acknowledgement set, that's optional. But for our configuration, we have it. So just date time stamps that yes, they agreed to this before they can start it. So I come in here and this is the part where this is information related to the incident. So they can see what time it was at. And default in their workplace. So they can pull that information based on the user ID. Um, they can put the exact location. Um, if they're off location, they can put off site. So if maybe I'm traveling for a conference, or I'm visiting another hospital and I was off site, I could put exactly the address of where it took place. So based here, typically you would select no injury or illness if it was like a near miss. Illness, like if I was submitting, if I had the COVID, um, I could use, would use illness. For this one, I'll select injury. And depending, 
the reason we ask this is it will update the core tables, but also too, depending if he's like injury or illness, it changes the values that the employee would have to fill out. This is more related to the injuries to the person themselves. Here they could select um, what treatment they re received. If I had to go to the hospital for a twisted ankle, they can also fill out what type of body parts it was related to the injury. So again, all of these are. Um, configurable so you can have as many or as little um, configuration as you want to pick from. Let's see which one. Then they would just click next. Um, here, if they had any witnesses, so if I had a witness that maybe the health and safety administrator could follow up with to verify my store statement was true, especially if there's any type of workman comps claim that I might be asking for. So maybe it was a witness if I want to, so these are for the employees, so they'll have that information. And we also pull in the picture because we have all the information based on the fact that they are an employee. What we have here is other contacts. So maybe the, I, there could have been a consultant with me. Or two, so that way the health and safety ministry can follow with there. So that's the workplace contacts are your coworkers. Other contacts could be eyewitness to the car accident or maybe um, a non-employee that's at your work, your business site. It could be a customer. So these are all the people that are connected to the incident that you can capture. That way the health and safety administrator can follow up with them. So you also have the ability to add attachments. So if you want to put in a doctor's note or any type of information like that, you can. If there's pictures of the accident, you go upload photos. So you come here, there's the last step. The employee will review all the information that they want to have submitted and they just hit submit. So it's pretty easy. They don't have to fill everything out. The things that they really have to fill out are the effective date and the description of the incident. Everything else is optional. Hey, Julie, we have a question. Okay. Uh, someone is asking if the acknowledgement step in the activity guide is a new ad since it had previously been, since health and safety had previously been delivered. It's not a new ad. Um, if you want, I can, sh I have instructions of how to add it. We didn't include it when we delivered it, but um, like I just added that myself yesterday. It takes probably about three minutes to add it. So if they want to know how to add the acknowledgement step, um, I'm happy to send um, the directions of how to do that. And I'll give you my email at the end. So um, it's pretty easy to add, and I can send that to you. So it comes here, it tells them that it's been submitted. So now I'm gonna log out as an employee because my part is done as the employee. And now I'm gonna log in as a health and safety administrator. So I'm logging in as Rosanna Channing. So I come in there here under Workforce Administrator. Once you download Image 36, you'll see a new Manage Health and Safety tile too. So under Workforce Administrator, also to Approvals. So under the Approvals, I can come here, and this is where as a Health and Safety Administrator, I can will approve the incident. So here is the one that we just did for the accident.
So I can come in here, I can view all the incident details, I can view the attachments associated to that as the administrator. Oh, I didn't mean to go all the way out. So if they have any comments, I can approve it. Um, and then once I approve it, it will update the health and safety um, administration tables. Sorry, it's a little slow. I got some distance learners here today. So it's been approved. So if I come out here and go into the health and safety administration, so we delivered this as part of image 36. And so with health and safety, there's a lot of places where you can do your configuration. There's a lot of pages to be updated, depends on what you're looking for and what you wanna track. The main two ones you're gonna use are incident details and injury details. I think this one was 126. So as you can see, based on what the employee filled out, it will update a lot of the information for the health and safety administrator before they were going through and updating all the information. So it put in the time, the accident type that it resulted in an injury. The health and safety administrator can come in if they need to and update additional fields. But for the most part, you know, it captures all the information, who it was reported by, who it was reported to, the health and safety administrator. It includes the description, the location code that it was a third floor bathroom. I wasn't traveling, so there's no car accident involved. It also tracks here. You can see I have one of two, so it tracks both um, the non-employee right here. So you can see it where it says non-employee, and then if I just go over, it now shows the employee. So it tracks all that information. If you needed to, you could um, put additional information in. Was the person under, you know, driving while under the influence at work on drugs? Are these people reliable? So all of this stuff they can, um, the health and safety administrator can track as well, and the reg region. And this is for also too later on for OSHA reporting. And then to the other main table that um, will be used is the injury part. So for this one, so everything will have an incident. Everything may not have an injury, because some things if it's a near miss or if they weren't injured. So, but everything will have at least an incident submitted. So if I come here, person's involved, May Lee, she's the employee, it pulls in all the information from job data and also personal data, that she's a female, her date of birth. It also pulls in that, you know, I twisted my foot in the bathroom, it pulls in that it was an injury, medical treatment was received, if any statements were needed to be taken, um, you could add this here. Also to memory fill out the different body parts. So the slippery floor. So it pulls in a lot of information and populates a lot of the tables what, before the health and safety administrator was having to take a lot of this information and um, fill it in. If it's work-related, so this is where you would put stuff for OSHA. So if I had to miss work, say for COVID. So if I have a 14 day quarantine, I would could put myself here, or if I was maybe in a car accident, a pretty serious car accident, and I was on the job for work and I had to be, you know, I was in the hospital for like a week or two. So you would track here, how many days of work they were gone. And if it was work related and when they returned to work um, and also how many days they missed. And all that's important, especially for the United States because it tracks all of the OSHA things and all that needs to be submitted to OSHA for the reporting. So it's a reportable case, and then it pulls in all this information, um, what type of, so we track all the stuff like OSHA, your logs, and then when you go to run the OSHA report, it pulls all this information and defaults it onto the report for you. So you don't need to manually fill it out. So it pulls all this information. So that's why a lot of this is important, especially for your legislative reporting. So it can do a lot for you. Also too, like if you, um, 
it tracks all your inventory. So if you guys have your customers as a customer, you guys track, especially if you guys have like company cars, all that, if you guys check out all on PeopleSoft, you can track, you know, if your vehicles were involved, um, the department that it's charged to, um, the estimated damage to the vehicle, all of that, the people that were involved. So you can track a lot of stuff like that too. Also any equipment that may involve, if you have forklifts that got damaged, you can track all of that and you can run reports on that to you know, see how much it's costing you for some of these accidents. Also too, you can do claims. So a lot of times for workman's comp, you can track um, if people were hurt. So when they opened it, um, has it been approved? What's the incense number? It pulls all that in. Also, too, for C, we'll pull in um, the OSHA case. You can also track any kind of medical expenses, like what's employees filing, what they want you to pay. You can track some of the stuff for your um, visit Kaiser, who is a facility, who is the claim provider. So you can track a lot of that stuff, too, regarding if there's any open claims for working with comps with the employee. You can also do like rehab plans. So if I'm injured, you know, due to a car accident and maybe I need partial, um, I need a work restriction or when I come back to work, if before I come back to work, I need to get a physical, you can track all of that in here as well. So if they need to have some type of rehab plan because, you know, they're injured, you can track what, what their work, work restrictions are. Um, two, if maybe if it's for COVID, you can put that they're working from home for two weeks due to quarantining. So if that's something that you need to track, you can track that in here as well. Any type of actions, rehabilitation plan, when the physician signed off on it. So you can track a lot of information, probably more than you guys need, but I'm just showing you guys what you guys have available to use. A lot of customers use... Um, Like identify corrective or preventive action. So for this case, typically if there's a big water spill or you know the cleaning crew was there and they didn't mop everything up and it was super slippery, you know, usually they put up the yellow warning signs, but maybe that wasn't there. So you could put that as you know, that might be preventative action. So going forward, it's your policy to always have those signs put up. You can say what the hazard is, who's responsible for that, you know, how long did it take. So those could be more preventative. Also, if you have a corrective action, maybe there's a pothole outside, and so you need to correct it, or maybe there's um, one light is out in the parking lot, so it becomes a more of a dangerous occurrence or a safety hazard because you don't want your employees going out to the parking lot late at night and there's no lights working. So that's a corrective action. So you can say who's responsible for that, when do they um, complete it, is it still in progress, you know, what's the estimated date. So that's what you kind of use the corrective and preventative action for to track what was um it's what incidents it's tied to and who's responsible to, for taking care of that incident both fixing it and preventing it from happening in the future one of the other things too that you guys can track too especially if you guys have maybe police officers or firefighters um people that have to have certain physical exams in order to perform their job so you can track their physical exams when the doctor signed off on it if you do random drug testing at your work, you can track um, drug testing as well. So you can do that, eye exams. Um, you can also track let me see. So one of the things under two that you can track that a lot of customers have been asking about is immunization details. So especially around a lot of people in healthcare, they always track when their nurses or doctors get flu shots. So you can track when they get the flu shots. Now a big one is, is when people are getting their COVID shots. So you can track, yes, I got my Rodana um, vaccination dose one on this date. And then you can track when they got their second dose. So you can track immunization details as well as part of health and safety. Um, if any employees need to take medication that you need to be aware about, or if they had any diseases that they want to disclose to you that you want to track. So you can track a lot of um, information too 
in here as well. In case two, if an employee wants to disclose that they are allergic to like amoxicillin, in case an emergency at work, you know, you can, you know, when the ambulance comes, you can say, hey, you know, person's passed out or unconscious. You can say, yes, you know, they're allergic to this drug. We can see it on file. So just information depends on what the employee discloses to you, but you can track a lot of information within health and safety. Hey, Julie, we have two questions, if this is a good spot to sure. introduce them. Uh, the first one has to do with uh, when you were covering uh, early on with incident details. Uh, somebody is asking, uh, they have a need to be able to capture more information about the employee ID. And she said that uh, currently um, the full ID isn't on the employee record. Um, or sorry, she says the injury ILL is the field on ample record, but it doesn't exist on the incident people table. Um, she is asking, is there a plan to add ample record to the incident people table because it's affecting their ability to do reporting because they have to track both employees and contingent workers? So you're saying for employee D or ample record? They're saying injury ill is has the field ample record, but it does not exist on incident people table. I can send you the details of this afterwards. Okay. I didn't know if it was something you knew from a roadmap perspective, but we can share this with you afterwards. Because right. you this can submit incidents for non-employees, not through self-service, because obviously you have to have a be an employee or have access to self-service in order to submit it, but you can track incidents for non-employees. So that's why you have like non-reported by a non-employee. So if I'm, you know, Shannon's at my work site and she's a consultant, so she's not an employee, but she might be either POI or contingent worker, however you have her set up. So if she only gets hurt, we still want to track that. So we would track her as a non-employee um, and she, we'd have that information in here because we'd create like a POI type for her. So you can track non-employee um, people. Typically, majority of the incidents will probably, depending on the nature of your industry, will be employees reporting incidents. But if you're, more, you know, if you're a grocery chain and maybe you're like a Safeway or Albertsons who you might have um, customers that slip and fall and get hurt. So you might have a higher percentage of non-employees in here, but typically we'll, most people in here will be employees that are submitting incidents. Okay, oh, yeah. yep, a couple more questions have come in. Um, there is a question about what is the, the overall major difference between what you're showing today and the health and safety admin pages that already exist? They're exactly the same pages. The only thing maybe looks different is I have classic plus turned on. Yeah, I thought it was tied to fluid and how, how you guys are presenting it now. No, oh, because I mean, there's the admin pages were there and they, they've been there forever. So we didn't, we haven't added to them yet. So this, what we see, you guys, it's been delivered for years and customers are using it. The thing that we delivered that was new was the dashboard to see to, we kind of grouped them a little bit easier for you guys, as well as the setup tables. And then the new part is the self-service part where it updates a lot of this information. Okay, and um, let me see, just following up here on the notes. Uh, the other one is uh, we want the employee to report their vaccination, if we want the employee to report their vaccinations in health and safety and we set up an incident type for that it doesn't seem like we can configure the fields to show on the report incidents page of the activity guide you can i've had some customers recently trying to use health and safety to report incidents some of them are doing a little bit different than what i have seen and it's something that we are exploring and i have asked to have it on the roadmap so it goes for approval for paco in two weeks for him to approve us doing some additional covid um features, but what I have seen some customers do is you can track it as an administrator, but what I've seen some customers do is they have used self-service and they report it like an incident. I don't know if that's the, the most recommended way. The, probably the best way I've seen it is they create, they clone the activity guide and they create a new tile and it says report vaccines and it's kind of very similar and they have the information to report a vaccine, kind of what you saw for the immunization those fields and that way it will go through and then it will update health and safety because there's not really an incident type of vaccines so i would almost recommend cloning 
the activity guide to report vaccines because it's kind of step it's kind of a separate thing than submitting an incident because an incident's not really a vaccine. I mean, you could use it if you're okay with it not working perfectly like that, but it's something that we're looking at. So I don't, we'll be using self-service, but it'll kind of be a little bit different than what the employee self-service is because we're going to kind of make it um, flow better, but you can use it. I've seen customers use it like that. Or if you have a partner too, they can help you um, customize it. That way it's a fairly straightforward customization to add um, just tracking immunizations. Or if you also want to expand it out to like drug testing, if you want to, if you guys have a third party, they can upload the test results, stuff like that. So I'd almost have like a separate tile for COVID or immunizations, even immunizations tile, and then have it look very similar because you don't need all the fields. You don't need workforce people involved. You just need a small, um, subset of what they're submitting in a small description. All right. Any other I think questions? I think a summary of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. Let's see here. Um, another question is, does functionality differ based on what palm a customer is on? No. So anything prior to image 36, um, all its functionality has been there. We made a few changes for like OSHA reporting that we had to do like a year and a half ago. So just some, there might be some small legislative changes that we've made. I know for like Brazil and the US, but for the main part of all the tables um, has been there prior to 36. So the bigger changes came in image 36. Okay. And then how do you secure data for HIPAA purposes? Well, depending on what HIPAA is, I mean, there's two different things. So it is secured because the person goes through attachment and it goes through to the health and safety administrator who can view the information. But again, they're not releasing the information to anybody. So the HIPAA typically is more for when hospitals have the information and they disclose it. You know, disclosing it, they're not supposed to disclose it to either the um, public or to the employer. So it's a lot of the HIPAA regulations are more on the hospital side or the insurance company side, not necessarily on the people's off side. But we do have the security where the health and safety administrator can see the attachments. Okay. And then uh, last one for now is, uh, is or will there be survey capability? There is a survey capability and I can show, I'm going to cover that in just a little bit. That's already available now. So I'll talk to that in just a few minutes. Okay. But for those who are looking to configure it, I will say I've been working for Microsoft for a while. This is probably the easiest, easiest module to configure. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and even we've delivered some data. If you guys need help, I have a, a spreadsheet of how we configured it and we put it as our sample data. So it's a good start. But these are the main tables that you would configure. Again, you don't have to, you know, configure all of them. If you don't have animals or property, animals are like for police dogs, or if you guys have um, property involved, um, company vehicles. So not all the stuff you would need to track if you don't want to. So also too, so the big ones are incident types. And again, we deliver a lot of this information as part of sample data to you guys as part of our configuration. So you just need to go through and say, okay, yes, you know, we don't have any industrial accidents. That's not type of our injury, our type of our industry. So you can live, you can deactivate um, some of the values or add some additional ones. So the primary ones are going to be incident type, accidents types, nature of injury, the source of injury, you know, what floor, um, fell off a ladder. So any of that kind of stuff, dangerous occurrences, hazardous conditions. So again, there are just some of the things that you have to set up. So it would probably take you less than a day to go through and do all the configuration for health and safety. It's pretty straightforward. It's just kind of tedious works of, you know, what are the accident types? Burns my body, uh, you know, a sprained ankle. So you just kind of have to go through and probably you already have most of this data because you guys are already capturing incidents, whether it's a third party system or if employees are submitting it to you on a paper. So you kind of already know what you're collecting and what you would need to configure within PeopleSoft. So we made it uh, a little bit easier too with image 36. We put all of 
the um, configuration together. Some of the configuration, a few of them are translate values, which if you don't know what those are, those are under the people tools. Some are under the workforce monitoring. Some of them were country specific. So under, we created an app collection to kind of make it a little bit easier for you guys to configure health and safety. So all we do is create an app collection for you guys. So we do support, as I mentioned, a lot of different countries too. So these, like I said, like these are the body parts. And for those of you, I'm not sure if there's any global customers on the call. So you have a shared one, or if you want to do it just by US only, maybe it varies. So you can set it up by reg region because um, we do, like I mentioned, we have very reg region specific. So if, depending on what your industry is, you can set it up or maybe just everything if you're just in the US. So as I mentioned too, you just need to go through the body parts, go through and say, okay, which body parts do I want to capture? What are the nature of the industry? What is the nature of the injury? Amputation, burn, scars. Again, so this is where you spend most of your time is going through and figure out what type of data you want to capture. The source of your, were they, was it an animal bite? You know, maybe I'm a city and I have postal workers or any type of like mail carriers. So you can go through and just kind of figure out what are some of the sources of injury. So again, it's I can't ex stress how easy it is to set up. So if you think it's going to be a module that's over daunting with setup, it's super easy to set up. And the last thing I want to touch on too, before I show you the new stuff, is that we do, like I mentioned, we do um, legislative reporting. So you would just go in if you need to run your OSHA report and we do like the incident reports. We also do the yearly summary that you have to send to them. So we do the 200, the 300 and the 301 for OSHA. So we um, collect all the information. So it pulls it all out of PeopleSoft, everything that you need to do. It knows in by who's logged in that I'm Julie Alonzo, that I'm the health and safety administrator, what day I submitted it, for October, goes for May Lee, it pulls all her information in, her address, all the stuff that's needed for the health and safety for the OSHA reporting, the OSHA information. And two, this is important too, that if an employee um, you know, contracts COVID through work, that, that you have to submit that to OSHA too. So depending on how they get COVID, it could be reportable to OSHA. And so besides the US, we also support Canada, France, Germany, um, the UK and Brazil for regulatory reporting. So if you have um, locations in those countries too, that we do support that. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty nice that we pull all the information in, it generates the file and report, so you don't have to fill out the, the, the paper report anymore. So we just have all the OSHA stuff for here. So it tracks all that. You just need to fill out what um, the employee is. So we do support you for um, reporting. Any questions so far, Shannon, on the? We do have another question uh, related to communication. Uh, the question is, is there notification capability, uh, for example, so that you can text or email a group of employees in the morning to remind them to have to complete their COVID check-in every day? Yeah, there's a couple different ways. I'm not sure if you guys have used, um, we have the fluid announcement tile. So if you guys have seen that for self-service, that came out a while ago and it's fairly easy to set up. If you guys haven't seen it yet, um, you guys can email me. I wrote a blog on how to do it. I'm not a functional person. So it's pretty easy of how you can generate the announcements if you want to do it every day. You also can use um, alerts and like emails that you can run. Um, you can set up that job to run like every day if you wanted to remind employees to do that. So you have those two options that you can um, let employees know so the announcement tiles pretty easy. You don't have to um, notify them, but you do. We do have the HR notification jobs that you can send out emails or they get an alert within PeopleSoft. I have to check about the text messaging. I know we have text messaging capabilities within 858 that you guys could leverage. So one thing only they, one for now. What was that? That's the only question for now. Let's. I think. So one somebody had mentioned earlier about a questionnaire framework, um, and what we we have that. I think it to be eight five six to use that. So you guys all should 
have that since 857 and 858s are the supported tools release. But you can create a COVID survey. So here in this example, we just created a tile called COVID-19. So every day when the employee comes in, um, they can see it. You can, it's pretty easy to create the questionnaire. Um, a lot of times they use this too for like similar to um, recruiting, they kind of use the questionnaire framework or if you always are using offboarding, some customers have used the questionnaire framework for offboarding. So you just come in here, you know, have you had a fever in the last 24 hours? Have you had vomiting or diarrhea, blah, blah, blah. So the employees can come in, um, fill that out, submit it, and then it goes into the survey results and the administrator can view all the survey results. So it, you can set it up where the employees should go in if you want them to go in every time they come into work and fill this out. Yes, you can do that. You can leverage the questionnaire framework to do that. We have not delivered every, anything because a lot of times it could be changing from customer to customer or even country to country, but it's something that you guys can leverage and easily build. If you want more information on it, we have you can um, email me. We have um, videos on Questionnaire Framework, plus Tammy Boyles wrote a blog of how to set this up for COVID-19 specifically. So she provides some page shots and details on how to do this. So if you guys, is that something you're interested in um, and you can't find it, just let me know and I can send that to you. <clears throat> okay, some of the cool new stuff that we're working on that's coming out fairly shortly. It's on the roadmap and it's already been, um, developed, because we'll show it to you in just a second, is that we now have some health and safety Kibana analytics. So if you guys don't know, Kibana is an open source um, tool. It uses Elasticsearch. So yes, you would have to be using Elasticsearch. Um, we build out all the indexes for you. So it's much, much faster than Simplight Analytics um, for, as far as performance too. The other requirement is that you do need to be on People Tools 858. So when you guys get there, but I can say that from a PeopleSoft perspective, not just from finance, but for HCMs, that it's a big investment that we have is with Kibana. So you'll see Kibana Analytics coming out fairly shortly. I know within HR, we have Kibana Analytics and recruiting has some. And I know that benefits, time of labor, absence, payroll also are all working on Kibana Analytics to come out very shortly. So it's one of those things if you think about, oh, we'll wait and see. It's something that we've heavily invested in and we're going full force with using Kibana. So. We'll show you what we've delivered for Kibana in just a second. So still under the managed health and safety, and these incidents are intended, as I mentioned, for the health and safety administrator. That's why they're all under the health and safety administrator dashboard. So you guys, if you want, you can put, you know, the Kibana, if you want to put it with your other analytics, that's fine. But for us, we are delivering it with health and safety. So as I mentioned, this has not been delivered yet. It's something that's coming out and it's targeted for image 37, which is coming out in probably just a few more weeks. So if you haven't seen Kibana, it's pretty cool. It's very visually appealing. It's very easy to use. Um, the performance is really, really fast compared to the simplified analytics that we have. So that's why we're converting some of our big, large um, analytics too. But for health and safety, just to complement what we've done for self-service, is we've provided some additional analytics. So the big one that's gonna help you guys out too, and for this one, we'll just take a look at everything for the United States. <clears throat> so it's gonna tell you too, based on, and you can set the time frame if you wanna look at the last year, last week, last five years, um, you can set that up here. I set up for the last five years, so I wanna see over the last five years, what have our incidents been? So you can see here, you know, almost 15% of our incidents have been near misses, which is good because it means that those are preventable accidents. So we want employees to be submitting near misses and looking out for their fellow employees, making sure nobody gets hurt. So we suspect that's gonna be a big one through self-service, our near misses. Um, here we have um, accidents, a lot of injuries, people are getting hurt at work, especially with carpal tunnel and people just slipping and falling. So that's a big one for um, companies to look out for is injuries. Um, this one, this this one, eight percent of our accidents are vehicle related or equipment accidents. So you can kind of see overall what type of accidents you have. You can also see them by date. So if I want to look them, this one I have it set up to look at for the last five years. So I want to see how am I doing? Are my incidents going down or are they going up? In this case, it looks like my incidents are going up for 2019. So it will help me take a look at why my incidents are going up 
and we'll show you that in just a second. You can also look at locations. So I can see California has a lot of incidents and I can drill down and see what type of incidents those are because maybe they need some additional training in that location. So it's just to kind of help clue you in, okay, well, why does Boston have so many, but California has so much more? Do they have a lot more employees? Is that the reason why? Is it just bad supervision? Do they need um, additional training? So what's going on there? So it's kind of just cluing me in as a home safety administrator to why is one location having so many more versus another one? And this is just a tag cloud. You can drill down and click on those too, but these are just some of the most popular words that were submitted through the employees' incidents. So you can see illness, near miss were the most popular ones where unsafe practice was not as much. This one will help you too for your legislative reporting. So I have 108 incidents that were submitted by um, employees or non-employees. 26 of those um, are reportable to OSHA because right now I'm just looking at USA. So 26 of those are reportable to OSHA. The things that might help you guys out too is based on those 100 incident, 108 incidents, now not all those will be injury or illness, but the ones that are, I had employees miss 234 days of work. So whether that's unpaid or paid, depending on how you have it set up, you know, that can factor in a lot to see that that's a big cost to your company if you're having these employees miss that much work due to um, injuries or illness. Sometimes they could be rented, but maybe they couldn't be, but that's something that's costing the organization a lot of money. One, from a productivity standpoint, people aren't at work, and two, a cost standpoint. And with this one, this is your primary outcome and treatment received. So if I want to take a look at all of my injuries, and even here too, you guys can come in. If I want to change the color, I can change it to a purple. So now I just change it to a purple. So if I click on it, if I want to see for my injuries, what was the primary outcome? So for my injuries, I can see how many people had medical treatment of those people. Um, these, you know, it tells me 12% had to go to the hospital, which is pretty serious. How many were hospitalized? Medical treatment means they just went to maybe the ER, first aid, primarily just took care of it at work, got some band-aids, maybe fix them up or no treatment at all, didn't need anything. So this kind of tells me too, based on my injuries, how were they treated? So I just remove that filter. Also down here, um, we have the incident number, um, the location, if there's employees' names. So some of these, maybe they're dangerous occurrences, but there's no employees involved. So like a near miss, there won't be any employees' names or outcomes, right? So depending on what type of incident it is, some of this data will be filled out. The nice thing too is um, if I wanted to, even when I'm in Kibana, I can go right back into PeopleSoft. So Kibana is a third party and you, once you're in Kibana, you kind of leave PeopleSoft, but all the security is built in through people tools and through PeopleSoft, but you can also still look at PeopleSoft information. So if I wanna find out more information based on that incident, I can come right back in here to PeopleSoft, you know, just to get a little bit more information regarding that if I wanna dig a little bit deeper. One of the other things too, that if you're something that you're tracking COVID is that if I wanna like search on all of my COVID stuff, I can um, filter on that so I can see it as an occupational illness. So I can see how many employees were sick, so up here, I can come up here and I can see for illness right now, the only thing that we're having, you know, employees are tracking illness is COVID. I can see here when I had the most spikes here. So pretty much in July, I had a big spike. Um, it's pretty typical October. So you can see here over the time, where were your big spike of COVID? You can also see what locations. It looks like between Ohio and California, those were the two big places that we're seeing a COVID outbreak or a large number of our employees getting COVID. So you can look at it by location. You had 14 incidents of COVID. Um, 11 of them, they got it through work because they had to report to OSHA. The other three could have been through um, a family member or something like that. But you know, if you want to do contact tracing, you can capture some of that in um, health and safety because you can say who's related to that incident. So you can do some contract tracing and capture that information within health and safety as well. And so for COVID, we had oh, people miss 135 days for 14 cases because you know they quarantined for 14 days. So that's a lot of work that people missed. So again, it kind of just gives you some information here as well. So you can do some COVID analytics too if you guys um, 
want to track that information as well. <clears throat> so these, as I mentioned, they have not been released yet. It's targeted for image 37 for our health and safety analytics. Let's see. So we will be delivering these. Uh, I think we have eight of them we're delivering. And then also, too, one thing that I'm working on with the health and safety focus groups, we have had a health and safety focus group, and it is welcome to join. Um, we've been meeting the last few months, too, so they helped um, design and provide requirements for the self-service part of it, and also, too, for some of the Kibana analytics. And the next thing that we're looking on, too, is providing additional enhancements for COVID, so COVID tracking, vaccine tracking through self-service, kind of doing that. Um, also, if we need to track for redeployment of employees, um, stuff like that. So I'm probably meeting with the focus group, I think, next week, and they're going to provide new requirements of what additional COVID enhancements they would like us to include in PeopleSoft. So that's kind of how it works. We meet with the customers. They say, here's everything we want. We look at it all, and we kind of prioritize based on what they've asked, which ones are the most important, and which ones can we deliver in a timely manner which ones um, maybe only one person wants versus really get requirements that maybe 20 people want. So that's kind of how we work with the focus groups and they kind of, we go through and flesh out the requirements. So that's the next phase for the roadmap. So I don't know exactly what we're delivering yet since we're meeting with the focus group and gathering the requirements next week. Hey Julie, we have uh, two similar questions. Um, they're okay. both related to uh, the capability for managers to submit incidents on behalf of an employee. Yeah, so we, when we, this first came out was right the March, April. So we, the first part was to get the employee cell service out. And then we have on the roadmap to have the managers also submit incidents on employees' behalf. So we haven't delivered that yet, but we have um, marked it for the roadmap. So we have not started working on it yet, but I know that we have asked Paco for approval to have that delivered. All right, thanks. Um, that is the question so far. I don't have any new ones coming out. I'll give people a minute if they have any others to submit. And you guys have my email here at the end if you guys have any other health and safety questions or if you guys want to take a look at how we um, set up our configuration, I can send you the spreadsheet that we used. Also, too, for um, PeopleSoft HCM, we send out a monthly newsletter that shows the focus groups like health and safety and what they're working on and what the requirements are and we kind of give other information. So if you aren't getting the newsletter, um, you can email me and I can add you to, so you guys can start getting the newsletter. We have one for um, HR. And then we also have one for payroll for North America. So those are the two newsletters that we have that we send out monthly. And Julie, just one other thing to add to the um, question about managers being able to submit on employees' behalf. Uh, since some folks might be new to the health and safety functionality, I do want to point out that the original capability of a administrator to be entering the cases and incidents has already been in the application, just not manager specific, which is what you tied to the right. employee yeah. service. Yeah, the administrator part where they would key in all that information, all the tracking that's been there probably since release, PeopleSoft release three. So it's been out there for 15, 10, 15 years. So it's pretty stable. We don't have a lot of you know, bugs on it. It's one of the easiest areas to support and maintain from that standpoint. But what we did deliver was the self-service functionality. All right, that's what I have for questions so far. And don't forget too, it is part of your HR license so you guys already own and use it. Okay. So with that, um, if there are any final questions, uh, please go ahead and, and submit those, but I will make a, a couple of closing comments. Uh, First and foremost, I want to thank Julie for taking the time out to, to share uh, some of these capabilities and a little bit of insight on what's coming up uh, in the future. So we appreciate your, your sharing this, Julie. If you do not get her newsletters, I would highly recommend them. A lot of great information on what's new and what's coming up in the product, as well as some nice highlights on what other customers are doing with it. Could give you some good ideas on, uh, on some future uh, things you might want to look at. And I also wanted to mention, um, Shannon has posted, uh, my counterpart has posted a few links in the chat window 
uh, MyPro has put together a seven part blog series on the health and safety features, uh, or at least on, on some of those. Uh, she's posted the link to that, as well as a, a link to the uh, blog post that we have on Kibana. So if those things are of interest to you, we've got some information out on our website. So with that, I don't see any additional questions. Uh, Shannon, I don't know if you see anything uh, from your side, but I think, uh, all right. All right, well, I will send this off the PowerPoint to you, Shannon, too. So if you send out with the recording, you're more than welcome to have the PowerPoint sent out to customers if they're interested. We can do that, yep. yep. That's fantastic, thank you. So we, we have recorded the webinar, so that recording is available. If you've got colleagues that, that weren't able to see it or if you'd like a copy, uh, feel free to reach out and let us know. And uh, if there's any other questions, uh, please reach out. We'll be happy to answer those. Again, I want to thank everybody for attending this afternoon and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week.